saying that I think that it's um, that the evidence is being misrepresented, and that by doing so, we are actually skewing the evidence. And so I just would like to affirm what actually Judge LaBolt said that, that once again, even if you do have doubt, and that is obviously justifiable. However, we only have to prove 50.1% of the evidence to be uh, considerably true. And so if you do have doubt, you need to also consider whether or not the evidence is overwhelming to the point that you can believe more than 50% uh, that it's, it's true. And so I think that showing the evidence uh, in five, A5 and 6, that it is quite difficult to argue that um, this isn't the case. And so that's wonderful. So you're telling them, all right, your land is about to be fumigated. But what are they supposed to do? I don't think that that changes the fact. Nonetheless, there's still clear liability. Because <coughs> you can tell them that, but that doesn't give them a chance to either negotiate, because clearly we've seen that Columbia is unwilling to negotiate. It doesn't give them a chance to move. And so now they're being displaced from their homes. So once again, there is clear damage. And so. I think we just need to consider this. That pieces five and six are that definitely do indicate that there were damages and do allow us to interpret that um, that Colombia is liable in some sense. Um, I mean, I, I, um, I understand that some of the ju justices will get confused with this. There's lots of evidence to, to set through, but five and six are very good sources. With regards to Judge Patterson's claims that it wasn't really in Colombia's in Columbia scope to um, inform or, or do more to um, communicate this to Ecuador. I don't. I don't think this is true. I think as soon as there was a minor risk that Ecuador would suffer damages, it became it became the responsibility of Colombia to inform. And um, I think the fact that they didn't, um, even though they may have informed them, that they. Didn't. Um, I I thoroughly agree with everything he said. Um, something that is, uh, I can't remember which judge stated this, but they stated that. Um, that Colombia hasn't even stated to Ecuador what is in the um, what is in the aerial fumigation, the herbicide. But I think that that's not relevant. Once again, we need to take in, in fact that this is a war against drugs, and that a country won't necessarily because if they tell, even if they just told the president and vice president, there's a chance that the president and vice president might leak it out, and then somehow that gets to someone who is somehow involved with the drug lords or. Let's say it gets, we talked about, Colombia talked about how some of their leaders have been killed because of the war on drugs. If someone gets killed because they leak it to another, you know, country. There's lots of instances that I think that Colombia doesn't need to tell anyone what is in the herbicide. But I do believe that it, it is affecting people, that um, we looked at the effects of glyphosate and even, even, we don't really know what's in the herbicide, but even then it can still like, uh, hurt you, and even if it's only for two to 24 hours. And um, Ecuador and Colombia both talked about the precautionary principle. And there's no, uh, the precautionary principle states that unless you have sufficient evidence to prove that there's no harm done whatsoever, you cannot contribute to the act. And there is no sufficient evidence to prove that there's absolutely no harm. Because if there was absolutely no harm, then there wouldn't be reports. This case would have been brought to the ICJ if there was not reasonable doubt.